Ray Ferrier, a divorced longshoreman, works as a crane operator at a port in Brooklyn, New York, and is alienated from his children, son Robbie, 16, and daughter Rachel, 10. On her way to see her parents in Boston, Mary Ann, Ray's ex-wife who is also pregnant, drops the two off at his home in Bayonne, New Jersey. Later, during a bizarre storm, lightning hits many times into the center of a busy intersection nearby, generating an EMP that instantaneously destroys practically all electronic equipment. At the impact site, Ray reluctantly joins the throng as a huge, tripod, war machine emerges from the ground and unleashes tremendous energy weapons on the region, obliterating everything and turning the majority of the witnesses into a gray ash. Ray gathers his kids, burglarizes the sole functional van, and then travels to Mary Ann's deserted house in suburban New Jersey in search of safety. They seek refuge in the basement that evening, but soon after they hear an odd roaring noise, the house is destroyed by an explosion. Ray and Robbie learn that a Boeing 747 had crashed into the neighborhood the following morning. When Ray encounters a news crew scavenging the debris for food, they inform him that numerous tripods have attacked important cities all over the world. They also mention that the tripods have force shields to protect them from the majority of humanity's defenses and that the tripods pilots came to Earth during the lightning storms in order to enter their machines, which are presumed to be have been buried thousands of years underground. Ray chooses to drive the children to Boston to accompany their mom, yet a frantic crowd swarms round their vehicle, constraining them to leave it. They at last get to a Hudson River ferry, only to be surrounded by tripods, which either massacre or abduct many of the refugees, but Ray's family manages to escape. They witness U.S. Marines engaging in a battle with some tripods. Much to Ray's dismay, Robbie joins the feudal fight against the aliens out of hatred for the invaders, while Ray and Rachel quickly flee the scene. The Marines are obliterated, with Robbie presumed to have been killed with them. Shortly afterwards, the pair are offered shelter in a nearby house by a deranged former ambulance driver named Harlan Ogilvy. The three stay undetected for a few days, even as a high-tech inspection camera and a group of aliens explore the basement. They soon discover that the aliens have started cultivating a red-colored vegetation across the landscape that is quickly spreading, and the group deduces that the aliens are terraforming Earth and potentially using the red vegetation as a food source. On one morning, Harlan experiences a psychological episode subsequent to seeing the stands collecting human blood and tissue to prepare the alien vegetation. Dreading his distraught yelling will alarm the aliens, Ray hesitantly kills him. A second tripod camera then finds the farrier sleeping, making Rachel escape and get abducted by the tripod. Ray then, at that point, deliberately stands out for the aliens to be maneuvered into the tripod and rescue Rachel, with assistance from other abductees, Ray annihilates the tripod from inside with explosives. A couple of days after the fact Ray and Rachel show up in Boston, where they find the alien vegetation shrinking and the tripods inexplicably collapsing. At the point when an active tripod shows up, Ray sees birds arriving on it, demonstrating that its force shields have been disabled. Ray alerts the soldiers accompanying the escaping crowd, who shoot it down utilizing anti-tank missiles. As the soldiers advance on the downed tripod, a latch opens and a pale, sickly alien struggles halfway out before collapsing and dying. Ray and Rachel at last arrive at Mary Ann's parents' house, where they are brought together with Mary Ann and Robbie, who had somehow survived. In closing, the narrator, echoing Wells' own monologue from the original novel, explains that the aliens' deaths were due to their immune systems being unable to handle the countless microbes that inhabit the Earth, which, God in his wisdom, placed upon the planet to protect humans naturally coexisting with the rest of Earth's biosphere.